welcome back to my channel so today's topic is dysmenorrhea so this is also called as period cramps so most of the women uh, women in the um, menstrual age within 15 to 35 to 40 to 50 they go through this uh, situation and it is very much commonly seen in teenage uh, 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 people so basically let me give you an insight of what is the period cramps what causes the period cramps what are the symptoms of this what are the various uh, diagnostic methods to analyze this and various treatment options which can be helpful for coming out from this particular situation. So as we all know this is a normal situation and every girl goes through this in her life. So there is this uh, menstruation that is happening every month. So I have already told you in my previous lecture about the importance of this particular system and it is also called as menarch. So this uh, period cramps is one of the most common gynecological condition and uh, most of the cases this, under, uh, 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 this condition is underdiagnosed and it is not even treated properly. Okay, It is just uh, taken as one of the problem and no, nothing is done on it. So this can lead to a lot of issues in uh, uh, students and even they, it can be a situation where they do not go to school or in even in uh, people who are working they may skip off the work because of the so much uh, pain that they are going through. It is uh, actually leading to so much issues. 50% of the uh, people world population is facing this issue and in that again 10 to 12% are having uh, a condition of severe dysmenorrhea. So I'll tell you these conditions what it is all about. So basically 600 million working hours and 2 billion dollars are lost annually because of this dysmenorrhea issues. You can just understand the intensity of this problem and basically what most of the people do is they just take few analgesics that is painkillers or uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines and they try to uh, come out from this situation. So let me give you some more options today so that you get to know what all can be done to come out from this situation. So coming to the classification of dysmenorrhea, we have primary dysmenorrhea and secondary dysmenorrhea. So the primary dysmenorrhea, this happens at initial stages of menarche where this is a common and normal situation but there are too much cramps coming in this uh, situation and this happens during the menstrual cycle as we all know uh, every uh, month uh, a girl goes through this situation from the age of uh, 12, 13, 14 this might start. So this uh, happens and they have a lot of abdominal and pelvic pain. This is because of the cramps that they are facing. So they can have other side effects also like headache, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. This can be other issues which are there. But this is a common and normal situation which is called as primary dysmenorrhea. But what is secondary dysmenorrhea? This is a situation or a disorder that happens in the reproductive organs. So this can happen in the later stages. So initially uh, if you think like one girl has a situation uh, initially she did not have anything of this primary dysmenorrhea but suddenly when she is in the age of 30s, 40s uh, she gets these kind of cramps. Then this is not normal. So that is what I want to make you clear. Secondary dysmenorrhea is not a normal situation. There is something wrong that is happening because of which these cramps have been started or initiated. So it can be something like your uh, uterine fibroids or any other issues in the uterus because of which this kind of dysmenorrhea or cramps is starting in her. So then definitely she has to consult a doctor and see what is happening with the situation. So secondary dysmenorrhea is because of the underlying pathology inside, some problem in the system there. But primary dysmenorrhea is a normal situation which can be treated in a better way. So coming to the symptoms of primary dysmenorrhea, it is having a lot of cramps as I told you and it starts, the pain starts from 1 to 3 days before your periods and it will definitely peak during the periods, the initial stage, the first, second day might be very painful and third, fourth day it can subside. So this uh, also has other issues like back pain, thigh pain, nausea, vomiting. So these kind of other issues are also there along with the normal cramping pains. So when should you see a doctor? So definitely when you have these cramps and discomfort and normal analgesics or any other painkillers are not helping you, definitely you need to see a doctor. And if you are seeing this uh, menstrual cramps uh, suddenly after the age of 25, definitely you should again consult a doctor because it might be because of the fibroids or any other issues that is happening which can lead to again menstrual cramps. 
okay so what actually happens the causes you, you can see here the during the menstrual period or the periods you call it so basically the uh, uterus contracts and it expels its lining so this is the normal situation along with the uh, follicle that we have the egg which is released and uh, the uterine uh, expels its lining it this uh, comes out as periods so what happens is there is a hormone which is released during this stage called as the prostaglandins and what happens in people who are suffering from this primary dysmenorrhea is high levels of this le uh, prostaglandins are released so when the levels of this prostaglandins are too too high it leads to more severe cramps so that is the main reason for uh, this cramps so if you can attack this post prostaglandin somehow and see to it that this concentration of this prostaglandin can be reduced somehow then definitely the cramps can be reduced so the other causes for these kind of uh, problems can be endometriosis so these are the uh, issues with your secondary uh, dysmenorrhea so definitely if there is uh, endometriosis so this is a situation where the tissues that line your uterus so certain tissues that are there which lines your uterus they start implanting outside the uterus so you can see a image here i have shown you this so these are the tissues which are uh, implanting here and there in the uterus uterine system so this can lead to other issues also it can contract your uh, fallopian tubes because of the pressure here and that can lead to other issues like fertility problems and other things can happen and other issues like uh, uterine fibroids or adenomyosis so there are a lot of issues here so all these can lead to secondary dysmenorrhea so certain times what happens is pelvic inflammatory diseases so if you are having a lot of uh, 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 inflammatory diseases then that also can lead to something called as ectopic pregnancy where the fertilized egg it implants outside the uterus than inside the uterus so this again is a issue so there are a lot of issues that can happen with secondary dysmenorrhea so the one of the main reason that uh, leads to secondary dysmenorrhea or primary dysmenorrhea can even be cervical stenosis so this is a situation where the opening of the cervix where the discharge of the spirit happens this opening is very small so smaller opening means definitely the pressure at that area raises and more is the pressure in that area it can become painful when the periods are happening so in this way a cervical stenosis can be one reason for painful periods so some treatment to make the uh, opening little wider can help so coming to the mechanism how exactly it works i'll just you uh, show you little bit details on that so i told you that progesterone is one hormone which is uh, 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 involved in the contraction of the muscles here in the vaginal area so once it contracts the period flow starts so this is what happens and i told you in this people who are suffering from primary dysmenorrhea definitely this hormone is in high level so definitely if this is high definitely the contraction becomes still higher and the pressure in that area becomes still more because of which it leads to a lot of pressure there and i told you one issue with these people they will have this uh, narrow opening because of which too much pressure is created which leads to cramps so this is the main uh, mechanism that happens and definitely if this progesterone is going to increase the cramps are becoming more and that leads to a lot of pain so this progesterone is uh, released because of the cyclooxygenase pathway so if you can try to block this pathway somehow or reduce the intensity of this pathway so that less of progesterone is produced then definitely this cramps can be reduced so coming to the diagnosis uh, usually a doctor might do a pelvic examination to just check if there are any abnormalities in the reproductive organs and to look for any signs of infection so infection also can lead to this dysmenorrhea issues so that can be checked using a pelvic examination other uh, diagnostic systems are you can try to use a transvaginal ultrasound so i have shown you the importance of this ultrasound in my last lecture also so that is how you can try to use a transvaginal ultrasound or you can try to use ct scan or mri scan and now recently they have even tried to use laparoscopic techniques so these are again coming up and definitely there's a lot of scope for laparoscopic uh, examinations because they just make a tiny incision okay this is image to show you how laparoscopic examination is done a small tiny incision is made and uh, fiber optic tubes is used so using a camera they can uh, inspect what is happening inside and that can be watched in a uh, system outside so in this way exactly you can see if there are any fibroids inside or any other issues inside which has to be treated in a better way so coming to the treatment options there are a lot of pain relievers or analgesics over the counter pain relievers available so that can be of some help doctors might even suggest a hormonal birth control pills 
uh, even that can be useful for this situation. Certain times if uh, fibroids and other things are there which are leading to issues, then you may need to have a surgery if the size of the fibroid is very much uh, big. But if, there it is, if it is in the smaller size, definitely there are a lot of Ayurvedic and allopathic and other kind of medicines which can be of help to reduce the size of these fibroids and that can be of some help. And definitely you have to go through some life, life, uh, lifestyle changes. You may have to introduce a lot of exercises that might be helpful for you. And definitely uh, this kind of uh, primary dysmenorrhea which is there in people, it reduces with the uh, age because uh, definitely sexual activities will increase the size of the cervix, cervical area. The uh, widening of this area happens because of which the cramping can be reduced to some extent. So definitely this will uh, reduce with age, but at the initial stage, this can be very painful, which requires some kind of attention. So using of use, uh, uh, using heat that uh, you have, you can have heating pads in that area. You can just uh, press it in that area, the pelvic area, and that can be of some help. You can try to even use certain supplements like vitamin E, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin B supplements, magnesium supplements. So this can be of help. So you can take it as a supplement or you can use uh, natural foods which, have, which are rich in these uh, uh, substances like banana, avocado, they are rich in magnesium, fish is rich in omega-3 fatty acid. So based on the diet itself, based on the natural food available itself, you can think of taking supplements or you can use supplements which are already there like tablets. And definitely you have to reduce your psychological stress. This is one main reason for this uh, uh, cramps. It becomes even more because of the hormonal imbalance. We have already seen this in my previous lecture, hormonal imbalance, how it can lead to PCOS. So same way here also stress will increase your hormones and that can lead to period cramps because prostaglandin is one hormone which is leading to issues here. So definitely if you can try to reduce your stress levels, you can indirectly try to relieve your period pains. So coming to, you can even try to have certain herbal tree. You can try to have anti-inflammatory food. So the tomatoes, etc., are anti-inflammatory food. You can have turmeric. So all that can be helpful. So coming to few alternative medicines which are available. Acupuncture is one technique which is there. They uh, extremely thin needles will be pierced in the back area. You can see how they you do this. So this is uh, uh, similarly acupuncture is done. And one more technique is there that is transcutaneous. Uh, electrical nerve stimulation. They stimulate your nerves so that your natural endorphins are released. So they are the natural painkillers. So instead of using analgesics, using this technique in your body itself, the natural endo, uh, endo, uh, endorphins, that is the natural painkillers will be released, which will help in releasing the pain to some extent. And there are a lot of herbal medicines available, which can be of help. And uh, recently they've even tried to use acupressure. So that is nothing but gently applying pressure to the skin. Uh, they have seen that this is uh, uh, minimally researched. So a lot of research can happen in this particular area also. And other uh, systems that we can we have is acupuncture, uh, TENS, okay, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and herbal medicine. Coming to the uh, product from PSAFE. So this is a company which is producing a lot of uh, 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 products for uh, uh, women. So they have their menstrual cups, they have their sanitary uh, reusable sanitary pads. So a lot of products are coming up from this particular company. You can just check their website for more details. So they also have uh, one product which is very useful. So there are very good reviews on this. You can just try and see if it works for you. Uh, so it is called as the feminine cramp relief roll on. So just you have to open this uh, roll on. You have to apply it in the uh, pelvic area. Uh, just 2 to 3 ml can be applied and you have to wait for a few time, a few minutes so that it shows its action. So basically this is prepared using herbal mater materials. You can see it is eucalyptus oil and uh, pudina. So these are the major ingredients used for this formulation and uh, it can be used for mild and moderate conditions. So if you are having severe pain, then definitely this may not help. But there are few reviews which tells that even in the severe cases, it has helped them, but it may not be uh, true for everyone. So you may have to check with your uh, system and see if it works for you or not. And you may consult your gyne uh, gynecologist or uh, doctors and then uh, see if you can think of using this. Typically, this can one roll-on can last for two to three cycles and uh, the cost of it is approximately 150 rupees. So there are really good reviews on this. You can just try and see if it works for you because definitely this pain is so much that you might be thinking of uh, trying it and seeing if it helps you. So in this way, I think this can be a good option. You can just see if it uh, tries to relieve your pain and some reviews even tells that um, after trying to use this, then they are not even using any painkillers. This is itself helping them in relieving the pain. 
So there can be a good or a good and bad of any product. So you can just try and see if it is helpful for you. So coming few uh, take away messages. Definitely primary dysmenorrhea. We have seen uh, the period cramps can lead to so many issues. But when comparison with secondary dysmenorrhea, which is more problematic, primary dysmenorrhea is not that problematic. We can try to do something out of it or uh, see to it. We can treat it in a better way. So uh, even yoga can help to some extent. Uh, you can try with, with uh, a lot of your uh, asanas there which can help you in relieving the pain. Lifestyle modification is very much required and you have to uh, definitely increase your water intake so that you prevent dehydration because you are already in pain, you are having vomiting, other issues during this situation. So you should hydrate yourself by taking enough water. You can have uh, water uh, at least three to four liters per day. You can have it in the form of juices. You can have it in the form of buttermilk. You can have it in the form of tender coconut. So whatever way you want to take it, just see to it that you maintain the water levels and see to it that you do not have too much heavy food during these days, because definitely if you are increasing the stress to your body by uh, having too much of uh, uh, rich food and dairy products that can indirectly have stress in you again. So try to have light food as much as possible and try to have food rich in magnesium and uh, omega-3 fatty acid which can be of help and definitely the product which I've told you can be of help that is a P-safe roll-on. So you can consult your gynecologist for much more suggestions but this is, video is made just to make you aware about the various concepts so that you get to know uh, the various things that are available which can be of help for you. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me till date. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and please share this video with maximum female uh, friends and colleagues that you know so that in case they are facing this issue, this uh, video can be of some help to them. Thank you.